In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As I was doing some research on my sermon, I ran across a funny story that I wanted to share with you, and I promise you it has a point. The story goes on that parked on the side of the road, watching to catch speeding drivers, a state trooper sees a car puttering along at 22 miles an hour. Thinking the driver is as dangerous as a speeder, the state trooper turns on his lights and pulls the car over. As he approaches the vehicle, the officer noticed there are five elderly ladies inside, two in the front seat and three in the back, wide-eyed and white as a ghost. The driver, obviously confused, says, Officer, I don't understand. I was going the exact speed limit, so what seems to be the problem? The trooper, trying to contain his chuckle, explained to her that 22 was the route number, not the speed limit. <laughs> A bit embarrassed, the woman grinned and thanked the officer for pointing out her error. Before you go, the officer says, I have to ask, is everyone in the car okay? These women seem awfully shaken. Oh, she said, they'll be all right, sir. We just got off of Route 127. <laughs> like the ladies, sometimes our journey can take our lives to a lot of different places. Different routes of our lives can take us uh, close and far. Sometimes it can also make us shaken. Sometimes we may not read the signs correctly, but even worse, like the poor ladies in the car, sometimes our journey on that path can keep us from true peace. Jesus knew that this was going to be the case for his disciples, that he loves so much. As the disciples would soon go into the world to spread the kingdom of God, Jesus knew that they were, as they go to spread the kingdom of God, they would soon face a lot of different obstacles. Anger, threats, beating, rejections, ridicule, and for some of them, even death. Jesus knew what he had to give to the disciples was the Holy Spirit and to give them peace. But not just any peace. Only the peace that God himself can give. So let's take a look at the gospel this morning and see what Jesus is talking about. Jesus continues his last-minute instructions with his disciples. Remember, this is up in the upper room. We're in the Last Supper. Judas has left to go get Jesus arrested, and Jesus knows his time has come. And because he does, he starts to give his disciples those final instructions. I've always pictured it like our girls right before we would leave. We would say, okay, remember to lock the door. Remember to feed the dog. Remember to do and all these instructions we would give. And this is what Jesus is doing with the disciples before his arrest. Last week's instructions, if you remember, as he was talking to them, is that they needed to love one another, and they needed to love their neighbor like themselves. All of us being short, uh, falling short of God. All of us being children of God. In other words, if you love others, you love God. And if you love God, you will love your neighbor. People will know that you are Jesus' followers by the way that you love God one another. The disciples will soon understand this. After all, as they head out into the world, they take that love with them. But they're going to need help. This is a big job to go and do a mission throughout the world. They need Jesus. They need to be led. And Jesus knows they can't do all this alone. So he tells them how he will be able to get this done through them. I have said these things while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all the things I have said to you. You see, Jesus is in the Holy Spirit. Do you see what he's doing? He's part of the Trinity. And so therefore, Jesus will never leave them. Jesus will never let leave them alone. Jesus will never let them walk on their own. Jesus will always be with them. Always. And 
Therefore, Jesus continues with his further instructions by making a statement to them, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not, I do not give the way the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let you, them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, but I'm also coming back for you. If you love me, you will rejoice that I'm going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now that I told you this before it occurs, I wanted to tell you because I, when it does occur, I want you to believe. Jesus is sending the Holy Spirit to them so that he may continue to be with his disciples. He knows he has to ascend. He knows he has to be with the Father so that he can do bigger things through his disciples to this day. But not only does he give them the Holy Spirit, Jesus is also giving them peace. True, godly peace. The Spirit will be with the disciples and all Jesus' followers forevermore. The disciples truly believed that Jesus can do this. The Spirit was with them the day of Pentecost. The Spirit was with them when they went to different lands, telling people about the kingdom of God and what Jesus has done. The Spirit was with them in the little small homes in which they started to teach and called the, the movement called The Way. The Spirit was with them when they were being persecuted. The Spirit was with the early church. The Spirit was with Paul as he spread the early letters. The Spirit was with the writers of the Gospel as their world was being attacked by the Romans and their temple being burnt down. And in all this chaos that happens in the world, they all had the peace of Jesus. And because they had the peace of Jesus, they all could continue to do their ministries. Many of them that we benefit from today. So what about us? Do we know the Holy Spirit? I mean truly know the Holy Spirit. And therefore do we share in the peace of God? Understanding or understand that being in God's peace doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that we won't be worried at times. We will. Let's be realistic. There we may even be fearful at times. We will be stressed at times. We may even be hurt at times. And certainly we will be in sorrow at times. But remember, after all, Jesus reminds us that if we are to follow Him, we too have to pick up our cross. And we will suffer at times in this world. But we still need to understand the peace of God. But when, the, when we understand like the disciples, like the early church, like the followers of Christ in the past, our suffering in this world isn't the end of the story. That's the beautiful part. Because we have the Holy Spirit that points us to the resurrection and therefore receives the gift of God's peace. We are not coming to the end of the story. This is only the beginning. And we need to always remember that as we are walking or riding down our journey with God. It's not the end. It's just the beginning. Like the disciples, Jesus also leaves us the Holy Spirit. He leaves the church the Holy Spirit. Jesus also leaves us His peace. First, the Holy Spirit is given to His followers. The Holy Spirit has always been here. Remember, the Spirit of the Lord moved over the waters of the deep at the very beginning of the earth's creation. But now Jesus knew that he needed to be with his disciples, all of his followers, all of his churches, all at the same time. And how can he do this? Again, through the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Jesus, through the Trinity, is in the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is personally with each and every one of us and right here in this church. That's why we go to the altar and we receive the body and blood of Christ. This is why the lamp is on when you come in to pray, to remind you of the presence of Jesus here through the Holy Spirit. This is why Pentecost something we're going to celebrate in a few weeks from now, is so important and should be recognized to understand what God has done for us. 
Jesus came back to his disciples. Jesus was able to lead his disciples. Jesus gives hope to the disciples. Jesus is always with his followers. And guess what? Jesus is with you too. Another gift to us is that we know the rest of the story. We know the rest of the story. We know about the resurrection. We know that this is just the beginning. The disciples got to witness the resurrection. And we know that there is eternal life. So no matter what life journey brings to us, like the ladies in the car, may it come fast, may it come slow. May it be confusing, may it take us far away. Maybe it's just normal. But know that Jesus is walking with you, and that, my friends, is the whole story. He is with us, and my friends, that is what I call true peace. Knowing that Jesus is with us through the good and bad times. May we walk away far, Jesus never leaves us. And when we come home, Jesus is here too. The peace has been celebrated in the church since the beginning because it's that important. The peace of God in each one of us is incredible. And we need to recognize it in our own lives. The same, the peace be with you, the same has been spoken in congregations such as this one for a couple thousand years. The giving of peace has become a ritual. And therefore, the reason that before the Lord's Supper, the priest, like myself, says to you, peace be with you. It's not just a saying. It's a ritual. It's a statement of who you are. Peace be with you and also with you. The ritual of giving of peace of the Lord goes back to the first Easter. Jesus appeared to the disciples in a locked room, twice said, peace be with you. Be with you. It is interesting to know that in the early days of the Christian church, the peace was not given as a handshake, but actually as a kiss. Some of us still do that, but we it was once a kiss. This kiss of peace is spoken at the end of several of the letters of the New Testament. The kiss begins at the altar and was passed around the entire church. Only those who received and gave a kiss were welcome to the Lord's table because they were truly at peace to be able to receive the sacraments. In a document from the early 3rd century, we read of a scene where the kiss of peace comes to a halt as two people refuse to kiss each other. There was a disagreement. We don't know what it was, but it was probably much like disagreements we may have between people in the congregations today. But the service was then stopped, and the presiding minister left the altar, went all the way to the back of the church, where this uh, kissing had been blocked. Only after he had marked out reconciliation did the peace continue its way around, and only then did the liturgy proceed. You see, the early church took that that serious, that a service could not continue if two people were angry with each other. I think we need that to come back in our society today. As we continue our year of evangelism here at Holy Trinity by the Lake, we need to understand the third part of how to evangelize. First, I've told you over and over, tell your story. Everybody here has a story of between them and Christ. It may be 30 seconds. It may be 30 days. But everybody has a story and it's something that should be locked in our minds so when people ask us, we can tell. But remember, you have to remember, it needs to be backed up by your love. This is what Jesus tells us. As I told you the story last week, when the car came by me, and had all the Christian bumper stickers on the back and cute sayings. But then the guy decided to flip me off. <laughs> when I saw those stickers, how could I take that seriously? It was meaningless. Because it needs to be backed up by love. And so we tell our story. We back it up by love. But for those, for those to occur, we need to truly be 
and the peace of Jesus. We need to have Christ's peace in each and every one of us. Because when we're truly at peace, and we truly understand what the future holds, what we know is about the resurrection, then we should just be happy. Even when things are bad, when things that we suffer, or things are up or down, we still know the end of the story. And therefore, we have peace. And it's when we have that peace is when we can love others. And when we love others, we will want to tell them the story. It is this peace that we need to enjoy because we know it is the rest of the story. It's the rest of your story. We know of the resurrection. We know that we are children of God. We know that the Spirit is with us. We know that Jesus leads us. So why would we not want to share it with others, teaching them also and allowing them to receive the peace of God? So go. Go into the world. Share your story. Share your love with your neighbors. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding always be in your heart.